thank you for your interest in the North Riverside Drive safety and operations improvement project. This is a recording of the presentation that we gave November 17th, 2021. We are having this public meeting because we are in design of the North Riverside Drive project and we'd like to get community input and feedback um, so that we can evaluate what we can incorporate into the project. The agenda for today's meeting is that we're going to have a, a project overview and then we'll talk some about the existing conditions that are out on North Riverside right now. We'll talk about some of the project scope and improvements that we're going to do with our project. And then we'll follow that with a discussion about our anticipated schedule and we'll follow up with questions and input. The project limits are North Riverside Drive from Northeast 28th Street to just south of Clary Avenue. The project um, was created because we need to rehabilitate the pavement of North Riverside Drive. The existing pavement has started to deteriorate um, and there are distresses that we need to repair now so that we can prevent that deterioration from getting worse and more expensive in the future. Some of the existing conditions that are out on North Riverside Drive right now are shown in these pictures. These pictures are from Goldenrod Avenue and Holly Street. You can see that there's a lot of existing surface cracking. There's also patching and repairs that have been made over the years, as well as potholes and manholes that are not level and affect the quality of the ride along this arterial. We also know that there is damage to some of the existing um, concrete and flat work out there, the sidewalks and ramps and curbs. Um, these are pictures that are at Goldenrod on the left and Aster on the right. Um, the example on the right shows an area where there's been ponding over time and the uh, curb and gutter has shifted as a result. These are pictures of other non-compliant um, ramps and sidewalks. Uh, the picture on the right is just south of Clary Avenue and you can see how the sidewalk is um, heaving up and creating trip hazards that we need to repair. Our project scope includes replacing the damaged curb and gutter sections. We'll also replace any damaged driveway approaches. And then we're going to follow the concrete work with the asphalt resurfacing of the roadway. That will include taking off the top layer of asphalt and replacing it with a new black asphalt surface course. In order to do that, we will have to remove the existing pavement markings. And so we will reinstall pavement markings with a new configuration. That configuration is in response to requests from the community to address some of the safety issues in this corridor. We also, with our project, are providing safety improvements for pedestrians. We will construct new sidewalks to fill gaps, and we will repair some of the existing sidewalks where they are damaged. We'll also construct new ADA compliant curb ramps along the project. So this is an example of what a project would look like that's similar, similar to this one after construction. You'll see a nice new black asphalt surface course, new pavement markings. Um, over on the left, you can see there's been some work to the ramps and um, sidewalks have been repaired. Here's some more pictures of what is um, proposed for the ramps and sidewalks and driveway approaches. These were just installed um, along South Riverside Drive. This is just south of Belknap. These pictures show, again, some more situations where we've had to um, modify some of the ramps in order to configure them to, to match the existing sidewalks and make them ADA compliant. So now I'm gonna turn this over to Jeff, 
Jeremy Williams, who is our transportation planner in our regional mobility group. Thanks, Elaine. <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to start now talking about the pavement markings for Riverside Drive. So anything between the curbs. So what we know for our existing conditions on Riverside right now, it's a pretty wide roadway. It's uh, four lanes, two lanes each direction. Um, we know that with wider roadways with multiple lanes, it lends itself to higher speeds that really aren't appropriate in the context of a residential neighborhood like Riverside Drive. And when we put this project together, we heard a lot of concerns from the community about increased speeding on Riverside Drive and concerns about the safety of being able to cross Riverside Drive with these um, high speeds, whether you're in a vehicle or um, walking or biking. So given that feedback, the city hired a consultant to do a traffic study earlier this year to look at what could be done between the curbs to slow down traffic and have safer facilities for everyone going north and south along the corridor. What they're proposing is a four lane to three lane conversion, which is on the right here. The biggest change to the roadway is the introduction of a two way left turn lane and then having one vehicle lane each direction, north and south, and then a larger buffer between the vehicle lanes and the curbs. So what this does is provide a safe place for people to make turning movements from their into their driveways and the roadways. And also visually narrows the roadway to indicate to drivers that you are driving through a residential neighborhood and need to slow down. So we asked the consultant to look into what are the safety improvements that we can see, uh, anticipate to have from a four to a three conversion. So this kind of conversion is pretty typical across the country in slowing down traffic in residential neighborhoods. And so they quoted the federal highways who's um, looked into the data of before and afters for these kind of conversions. And across the country, you typically anticipate between 19 to 40% reduction in vehicle traffic when you reduce the number of lanes from four to three. The way this reduction in crashes works is that it reduces the number of right angle crashes. As you're turning into the side streets or into driveways, you're only looking for one vehicle either moving south or north. There's not the opportunity for somebody to be, be hide, hiding in an uh, adjacent lane. So the sight distance for uh, turning movements is safer. It also, the center turn lane provides a safe place to wait to make a turning movement into the, your driveway or into the streets. Um, it's really the purpose of this is to reduce the number of possible interactions you have with another driver or somebody walking and biking along Riverside. Other safety improvements that are found from a four to a three conversion, um, specifically with the center turn lane, is that it provides a predictable path for emergency responders so that they know that they only need to navigate in the center of the roadway and not have to uh, go around cars that are either turning or parked along the street. It also has, again, the narrowing visually of the, indicates to the driver that this is a reduced speed area. And overall, the reliability of your trip improves when there is a space in the roadway for each of the movements that are taking place. So you can anticipate that there will be one lane of travel moving north and south and anticipate where somebody will be making turning movements in the center turn lane rather than using the inside lanes to wait and make the turning movements. So it's enhancing the reliability of your trip by make, repurposing the roadway to specific uses. Other safety improvements that we see in these kind of conversions um, benefit people who are walking and biking along the corridor. So with the extra space that we have between the travel lane and the curb, there's an opportunity to provide a facility for people who uh, bike north and south along Riverside. This buffer distance also improves the safety and the comfort of people who are walking along the roadway on the sidewalks that we're installing or maintaining. And then with students and others crossing Riverside Drive, it's fewer travel lanes to have to predict to cross the street. 
There's also with the introduction of this inner turn lane an opportunity for a resting point for those who are unable to cross the entire width of the street in one movement. So overall, the four to three conversion is um, addressing the concerns that the community gave us and hopefully to improve the safety for Riverside Drive. I'll hand it back to Lane to talk about next steps in our project schedule. Thanks, Jeremy. So this community meeting held in November and we hope to have all of the final uh, changes made to our plans by December of this year so that we can advertise for construction this project around February of next year. After we advertise the project and receive bids, we will go to council to get approval. And then we should be back with another public meeting prior to construction in May of 22. We anticipate um, that construction could begin around June of 2022 and end in December of that year. This shows the contact information for our team. Uh, the most important contact is Tariqul Islam, and he is the project manager for the North Riverside Drive project. He will be um, you know, the most informed of the day-to-day -day progress on the project. My information is shown here as well. If you have just general questions about um, you know, pavement management, why we do what we do. Um, Jeremy Williams, his information is on here. He's our transportation planner in our regional mobility group. If you have questions about you know, the four to three conversion, um, he's a great resource for that. So thank you so much um, for your time and your interest in this project. Um, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thanks, Lane.